Hello and welcome to Well Fever. I'm Dan. Today we're going to explore the mysterious world of plasma cutting. So stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so let's begin the discussion by talking about the machine itself. Uh, this particular machine that I'm using is a Meller Spectrum 875 Auto Line. It's a great machine. I've had a lot of success with it. It's very easy to use. But I will say that all plasma cutters are very easy to use. Uh, I think there's a lot of mystery surrounding these, at least that's what I'm finding out, because most people don't have access to them, and so they think that uh, perhaps there's some kind of complication or trickiness to them. In reality, they're very, very simple to use. This particular unit has a maximum uh, amperage of 60, 60 amps, and that's the maximum you can cut. Now, I believe Miller recommends to just put it on maximum and adjust your uh, rate of travel in order depending upon the thickness. Other manufacturers recommend that you put your machine at 90 percent of maximum uh, and never really cut to the machine's stated maximum but just a little bit under that. I tend to agree with that. I don't like to push my machines to maximum if I can avoid it. And I know the parameters of this machine and how, what the thickness of, of material that it can cut, so I'm not going to really try to go beyond that. In fact, I'm not even going to try to get to that thickness if I can at all help it. Uh, you got to kind of realize that plasma cutters are intended more for thinner materials like sheet metal and whatnot, and thicker materials are best left to other stuff, uh, other devices such as uh, oxyacetylene and whatnot. But the benefit that plasma has over oxyacetylene is that plasma can cut any material, whereas oxyacetylene cutting cannot. So, for example, oxyacetylene cutting is basically just for ferrous uh, materials. So we're talking about basically steel. Uh, however, it will not cut stainless steel, oxyacetylene. Oxyacetylene will not cut aluminum. Uh, it will not cut other materials, whereas plasma will. Plasma just blasts through anything, uh, and that's the benefit of it. So, uh, anyhow, looking at the machine here, we have a dial indicator. It's a very simple setup. We have an on-off switch. We have a dial indicator that gives you your amperage. Again, as the manufacturers recommend, put it at either 90 or 100% of maximum. Set it and forget it. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Here we have a power switch, a pressure or excuse me, a power indicator, a pressure indicator, uh, a cup indicator, and a temperature indicator. And basically what these are are telling you whether or not uh, everything's functioning okay on the machine. Um, this here, if you can see it, I'm going to bring it into the camera. This here is a filter for air because in a plasma machine, a plasma cutter, you need to provide compressed air of some kind. Uh, an air compressor works just fine so long as you have at least 90 psi. Uh, some people choose to use uh, compressed gases. I believe nitrogen is what they use. I wouldn't bother with that, but I guess if you're in the field and you're in a pinch and you really need it, then that's the way to go. My understanding is I suppose that there is a little bit less contamination when it comes to that, but honestly, I've never noticed really much contamination, if any at all, using compressed air. So and given that I have a nice air compressor and it's essentially free that's what I go with so that's the uh, that's the situation there by the way the reason for the air filter if I didn't mention it earlier is to keep water and moisture out of the machine as you may or may not know compressed air from air compressors has a lot of moisture in it and that wreaks havoc on just about everything you use with a uh, air compressor and that's why when you use pneumatic tools or spray guns uh, it's usually recommended that you put a couple of drops of oil in them to prevent rusting well it's no different here only uh, you don't want to put oil in this instead you want to have a nice filter that will prevent the moisture from getting into the machine in the first place so it's a very critical uh, thing to have uh, the machine does have some filtration in it, and most manufacturers' machines do, but you have to check on that. But I don't want to take chances on something like this. This is a very expensive machine, as are all plasma, most plasma cutters. There are some inexpensive ones out there, but nonetheless, it's an investment, and you don't want it to break over something so ridiculous as just 
you know, failing to put a filter in. Um, whether or not it would or wouldn't, I don't know, but I, why take a chance is my attitude on that. So anyway, that's why it's there. The next thing we're going to focus on is the gun. Now this particular gun uh, came with the machine. It's an ICE 60T. And I will see these guns are very expensive. <laughs> if you uh, don't take care of this gun, you'll be sorry because you'll pay a pretty penny to replace it. But anyway, uh, it's a very simple mechanism. You basically lift the safety lever and push down in order to initiate the uh, hot stream of gases that come through there in order to cut. Now, a lot of machines have uh, what they call just a standard tip. And on the standard tip, when you cut, uh, you have to hold the uh, hold the uh, piece about an eighth of an inch away from the workpiece in order to cut. Uh, you can touch down on it, but it's not recommended because it destroys the electrode. This particular gun is equipped with what they call a uh, drag tip or a drag fitting. If you notice here on the close-up, it actually has a series of little uh, I guess little indentations here and I'm gonna try to point them out right there this is so that the plasma gases can escape so this tip is meant to actually be placed flat on the workpiece and be able to drag it along meanwhile these little cutout sections allow the gas to escape from all four sides there from a 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock position. And the gases just escape that way. This makes it extremely easy to be able to cut. The only trick is you have to have it flat and square to the surface. If you cock it this way or you have it raised a little bit, it actually uh, shortens the life of your consumables in here, meaning your drag, your drag tip and your electrode and all that good stuff that's inside there. So... Uh, Proper technique is important here, but again, we're not talking anything complicated. All you got to do is make sure it's flat on the workpiece and drag it at a good rate. Okay, so uh, what kind of safety equipment do you need to uh, run plasma? Well, it's a uh, very similar safety equipment, if not identical, to that you use for welding. You want a nice welding jacket with sleeves, preferably leather like this one. Um, there are many variations on it, but... Uh, Without getting too technical in terms of what plasma does, basically it's swirling hot gases. And I believe it's said that uh, plasma gases coming out of the uh, gun are the equivalent of like 10 times the heat of the sun, which sounds ridiculous, but that's uh, what the literature says, something to that effect. Keep in mind uh, that another form of plasma is lightning, and uh, we all know the destructive power of that. So uh, this is really something not to be toyed with. It's very uh, serious. Uh, it can be dangerous, obviously. Uh, so that's why proper protective uh, clothing and uh, gear is, is necessary. Next thing I have here is uh, I have a fire retardant beanie. Uh, they sell beanies and hats and all kinds of things like that. I mean, just in case something jumps up and gets you in the head, there's nothing worse than a scalp burn. Uh, it hurts like hell, and it lasts. Seems to the wound seems to last forever. So, I like to protect my head. Uh, then we have, of course, welding standard welding gloves. Uh, the best leather, of course, obviously frame, you know, fire resistant. And over here we have some. I have some goggles that I use. Uh, I wear glasses, so these partic this particular brand of goggle fits over my glasses. Uh, also, the type of goggles that are completely sealed up, like you see for oxyacetylene cutting, work fine. And uh, in, in a pinch, you can use your welding helmet. Now, they say, in terms of the shade of darkness, that if you're going to use a plasma cutter that's 60 amps or below, that anywhere between a 4 and a 6, number 4 and number 6 shade is acceptable. My glasses happen to be a number 5. Uh, I think it's standard procedure that number 5 is what you use for oxyacetylene and, and, the, and the like, so I'm fine. If you have an adjustable welding helmet, you can lower your uh, setting down to a number 5 shade, or if you have a fixed lens and you have different uh, actual uh, shades of lenses, you can always just replace your lens out with a number 5, and that'll work fine. But you do need some eye protection. It's important that you don't try to, you know, just stare at this with your eyes. I know there's a lot of TV shows out there where these guys are working on stuff and they don't wear protective gear and they stare at everything and 
you know, that's all well and good, but, uh, you know, if we're going to do this for any length of time, eventually it's going to catch up with you. And unfortunately, it'll probably eventually catch up with those guys. And uh, me personally, I don't take any chances. What for? I want to be doing this for a good long time. I want to have good eyesight, good hearing. I want to have decent skin. <laughs> I don't want to end up burned severely. I don't want any of that stuff. So in order to avoid that, very simple. I use protective equipment. Okay, on to the next part. Okay, so now that I have all my personal protective gear on, my glasses at the ready, my gloves ready also, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take care of some cutting here, and I happen to have a project uh, ready to go, so uh, let me show you what we're going to do here. Okay, so I have a large piece of uh, 4 by 6 uh, rectangular tubing. I'm going to cut a line all the way across this here. Uh, I have a piece of angle iron that I put down here as a guide. Because as you recall, our gun has the drag tip on it. And so all we're going to have to do is take this and drag it straight across. Now, in order to accomplish this, the easiest way is to have something that you can drag against, a straight line preferably. And in this instance, I can't think of a better thing than a piece of angle iron that I already have clamped to the piece. I have a line here, and because the uh, center of the actual cutting area is about a quarter inch recess from all sides uh, then I have to make sure that my angle is spaced a quarter inch out from the line where I want to cut so without any further let's go ahead and make this cut also before I get started one other thing I want to mention is that uh, you must ensure that you have a negative or I should say a ground clamp uh, clamped onto your workpiece. Just like a regular uh, welding machine, you do have to have a ground clamp uh, connected. So here we go. Now here is the result of my cut. It is a very clean, clean cut. I had a little bump uh, along the way. I kind of uh, pressured it and I had a little, one little mishap. But you notice my travel speed when I did this and you can see this line here. I mean it just cut it beautifully. Like nothing. Just like a hot knife through butter as they say. And look at the beautiful edges. There's very little dross. Dross is the leftover slag-like substance that comes out from a cut. But I'll tell you that, uh, like I mentioned previously, uh, if you're not having any splatter come back on you, if, if all of the, the plasma and the sparks are just going straight through, through and through the piece like they're supposed to, you know you're doing it right. And you know that uh, you're going to have a really nice, successful, clean cut. Fortunately, uh, I'm lucky to have a powerful 60 amp plasma cutter which went through this material like absolutely nothing. And this material here is uh, 3 16 inch thick, give or take. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So that's basically plasma cutting in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual, uh, give us a thumbs up, like this video if you enjoyed it and your comments are always appreciated and more importantly subscribe to our channel that way you can continue to get uh, updated every time we put in a new video thanks again see you on the next one bye bye